course, and really good friends of the channel has been able to tell me a little bit about the Star Trek pitch for Academy. And it's a little bit what we thought, but actually a little bit good. Welcome to Sidetrack Your Sci-Fi TV and Movie Channel. As you guys know, if you're a regular side tracker, we've been talking about Star Trek Academy for a while. We keep calling it Star Trek 90210, poking fun a little bit at a TV show that we suspect is not really going to be for older Trekkies. There is a bit of a theory by Alex Kurtzman and his friends over at Secret Hideout that they like to create Star Trek shows for different demographics. Discovery was for a younger audience and I will put my hands up right now and say I really don't like Discovery. I've tried. I've really tried. I'm a Trekkie at heart so a new Star Trek show comes out. I want to love it but I just don't. I think it's full of characters I don't care about and basically I really never liked the design of the ship. That was really a problem from day one for me. But the characters is a little bit more of an issue. But but what I'm trying to say is, other than maybe season two, which I actually did like, and every episode that Empress Giorgio has been in, because she's amazing, I've not liked Discovery. So, news that we're getting Star Trek Academy doesn't fill me with much excitement either. Because, talking to my source, he's been able to confirm that, yes, this will be a follow-on from Discovery. I think that's not really breaking news. We all know that. It's been hinted at several times in the show. It can also confirm to me that at the moment, the character Tilly from Discovery will be appearing in this series. Also, again, not really a shock. But he has been able to tell me a little bit about what Secret Hideout pitched to Paramount, but more importantly, what Paramount then dictated back to Secret Hideout about what they wanted in this show. They did give them a set of sort of guidelines, what this show is supposed to look like. And I'm going to be able to tell you a bit more about that now. So for one, what Secret Hideout basically pitched this show as was not just Starfleet Academy and the actual rebuilding of Starfleet. But this show would be a way of seeing the Federation getting rebuilt as well through the eyes of the youngest cadets as they begin their journey to boldly go where no one has gone before. Now, I'm actually going to say that is a massive positive for me because actually rebuilding the Federation is something I kind of wanted to see in Enterprise and we never did get to see. We missed a massive opportunity there to see the Federation actually becoming but they focused on that temporal time war thing instead a little bit more than I'd have liked. Here, we have a fledgling rebuilt Federation. Now, obviously, it's going to be very different. It's not what we wanted to see in Enterprise, but we get to see some of those elements that we should have seen in Enterprise, maybe in this new show. Now, I quite like procedural dramas and things. I quite like cop shows and stuff like that. I quite like shows that really get into the detail of things. If this show does that a little bit and we get to see some of the politics and stuff of rebuilding the Federation, an expansion of what we've seen a little bit in the last couple of seasons of um, Discovery, actually, to be fair, then I'm all up for that. And I think that sounds like it could be really interesting. But let's be honest, they won't really do that. They will get locked into some overarching story and, you know, that'll get ignored. But hey, let's see. One of the things they did talk about was taking some of the best things from Discovery for me and expanding it into the new series of Academy. For example, one of the things they talked about apparently in the pitch meetings is getting to see lots of new starships. The Academy students will get to spend time on different ships doing different missions throughout the seasons. That will get us the opportunity to explore brand new Federation starships. That's a flying rainforest. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest, they probably saw how excited sort of fans got when we saw the new Voyager or the Nog, things like this, and they want to expand upon that. They will make a big deal about maybe a new Enterprise. 
we'll get to see lots of things like that during this series. And apparently in the pitch meeting, they made a big deal about that. If you are enjoying the video, don't forget to like, subscribe with the bell notification, all those things. But also go over to patreon.com forward slash sidetrack. That is where most of our videos do premiere first and you get to see them without all the adverts for a small fee that really helps out the channel. So yes, according again to the people from Secret Hideout, this will be a very character driven show aimed at the younger audience. They want to carry the audience that they've developed through Discovery into this new show. Now I have nothing against character driven TV shows. You can argue the next generation on the whole was a character driven TV show. I love series like Firefly, which is very much a character driven TV show. But going back to my silly little joke about calling this Star Trek 90210, that is a little bit of a problem to me and uh, there are alarm bells. Apparently, Paramount did dictate to Secret Hideout that they need to have far more interesting characters, that they wanted Secret Hideout to look at Strange New Worlds and the way the character development has worked on that show and to try to emulate that again. I think Paramount are very much aware that some of the characters from Discovery have been very, well, let's say, forgettable. And again, other than Empress Giorgio, who was just phenomenal, a lot of the characters no one cares about. They're not interesting. Even the lead character, you know, Michael Burnham, isn't a particularly interesting character. A great actress. I absolutely adore her as an actress. But she's just not written very well. And that is a big problem and something Paramount have really emphasised during these pitch meetings and then development discussions, that the characters have to be more interesting. Now, the big part of that is going to be casting. Again, Anson Mount is a brilliant actor and he really brings Pike alive. But there are several other characters over at Strange New Worlds who are just more interesting than any of the characters on Discovery. They are going to have to make a big effort on that area. Now, talking about that because of the character development of a character-led show, if the characters are interesting, the show will work. If they're not, it won't. And what we're going to end up getting is a show like 90210, where it's a bunch of younger people and younger people's problems. If the characters are well written and they're interesting and their casting is right, everybody will be able to relate to those characters. If they're not, there's going to be some older Trekkies that once again feel a little alienated by the Star Trek Academy, like we feel a little bit alienated by Star Trek Discovery. Another thing that was discussed in the early pitch meetings and development meetings was that Discovery was not a particularly funny series. Again, other than the Giorgio episodes, which were brilliant because she was just such a, a bigger than life character, Discovery was way more serious. And Paramount very early on dictated that they want to see a lot more humour in this new series of Star Trek. And apparently during the pitch meetings, that was what was discussed a lot, is ways that this is going to have a little bit more of an injection of humour in every episode. And that actually the way Star Trek Academy is being set up, it will allow for that. I suspect here, and this is just speculation, but I suspect here it's going to be that there will be certain characters that just can't get anything right. There will be funny scenarios between different alien races trying to get on and things like that. I can actually see lots of ways to inject humour into a series like that, even if it is maybe a little bit slapstick. Whereas, you know, they're trying to do something, they fail. And let's be honest, people failing, especially people that think they're clever, is always funny. Finally, the way Star Trek Academy was pitched was saying that it wouldn't be a Monster of the Week series or having major overarching storylines that, as I said, it's going to be very much character driven and setting driven. So it's driven by the fact that they're in the Academy. There will be the odd Monster of the Week episode and there will be some overarching storylines, but the focus will be on basically the classroom. Now, I don't know how you guys feel about that. Get into the comments and tell me. But I think that's a little bit concerning from the get-go. 
I think that really limits where this show can go. Now, I'm going to do a video in a minute, actually, talking about comparing Academy to Legacy and how I feel Academy can harm the franchise, but Legacy could free it. Now, the point is that the setting is really important. A little bit like when Deep Space Nine came out, I didn't like it at first because I felt it was set in a very limited way. It only really became an exciting TV show when The Defiant came into it, because that allowed the show to expand. It freed the storytelling. If you have a series that is focused in one setting, you are really tying the hands of your writers because they can't get out there and explore. Now, it seems that Academy has already considered this because, as I was saying in the pitch meetings, talking about students going on different ships, going on missions, etc., etc. Now, that would allow the series to be free to some degree, but not on a regular, consistent basis. So that is a little bit concerning for me. Another thing that is a little bit concerning, and I keep making this joke that this is going to be Star Trek 90210, a joke that not all of you appreciate, but... It does sort of represent my fears on this. I am going to say, though, really quickly, I am going to give Star Trek Academy a chance when it comes out. This is a show that I've not seen. This is a show that's not even been completely written yet. So I'm not going to stand here and say it's going to be a load of rubbish. I don't know what it's going to be like. But what I can do is talk about my honest, genuine fears about the show. They are my opinion. And really, if you share those opinions, get in the comments. If you don't, get in the comments. That's the point of having a sort of discussion like this. On this channel, no one's right, no one's wrong, unless you say I'm wrong, in which case you'll be banned. Not really. But things like the fact that the showrunner is this Josh Schwartz is a little bit concerning for me because he's been the executive producer on lots of TV shows over the years. But those TV shows are the kind of shows I'm worried Star Trek Academy will become. It's things like The O.C., Gossip Girl, The Astronaut Wives Club, which was actually a pretty good show, but uh, it was also, though, the executive producer on Chuck, which was actually quite a funny show. And eh, if we get something a bit more like that and an injection of humour into that, then, yeah, that could work. But shows like The O.C., that really does fulfil all of my worst fears. If, as a showrunner, Josh Schwartz brings those influences into this new series, we are going to get Star Trek 90210. And that is what I'm worried about. So this show has been decades in the making. It is true that actually Gene Roddenberry even wanted to create a Star Trek Academy show all those years ago. We saw Star Trek Academy episodes on TNG and Deep Space Nine. And I have to say, on the whole, they were crap. Wesley going off to the Academy and getting bullied. I couldn't care less. They're the most forgettable episodes. They were rubbish. But in Deep Space Nine, we got to see a Star Trek Academy episode, which was genuinely brilliant. Aaron Eisenberger's Nog was always one of my favourite characters. He was just lovable and brilliant. We got to see a different side of the Ferengi in Deep Space Nine, and Nog was really the epitome of that. In the episode Valiant, though, he was aboard the um, Defiant class Valiant that was a training vessel. It was a training vessel that got caught behind enemy lines during the early first days of the Dominion War. It had had a few officers aboard that were killed early on. So all that was left now was Red Squad, the Academy students, the elite Academy students, the best of the best. Captained by Ramirez, they actually had this ridiculous plan to go after one of the big Jem'Hadar battle cruisers, and they lost badly. This episode did what Deep Space Nine really did brilliantly a few times, which was flip what we considered to be Star Trek on its head. This episode normally, if it had been Next Generation or something like that, would have had a happy ending. The Valiant would have survived the Valiant maybe would have been saved by another starship or something, and they'd have all learned their lessons, but they'd have at least kept their lives. In this case, that is not what happened. It had a very non-Trek ending. 
And this was one of those episodes that was actually written by Ronald D. Moore. And you can tell because it was very, very clever and it twisted all of our expectations. Now, if Star Trek Academy can do episodes like that, something that does twist our expectations and that does make us think about those earlier days in our lives when we were growing up, then it could be a great show. But if they do episodes like what we saw in TNG, then, to be honest, I don't want to watch it. But let's give it a chance, because this could actually go on to become one of the great Star Trek shows. It does have lots of really interesting possibilities. And from the pitch meetings, there are things in there that I really like the sound of. But there's also the problem that this is a TV series that's potentially got one hand tied behind its back. And let's see what the writers actually end up doing with it. It's going to be interesting, though, either way. So, guys, get into the comments and tell me what you think. Is Star Trek Academy, Star Trek 90210 something you're excited about? Or actually, do you just think that's one obstacle in the way of legacy? Give us legacy. Who gives a crap about Academy? That's a little bit where I feel. But I'm open to it being a great show. So let's cross our fingers and hope. But what do you think? Get into the comments. If you are new to the channel, please like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. It really helps us out so you'll never miss any of our new videos. Also, you can go to patreon.com forward slash sidetrack where most of our new videos do appear first and you get to see them without the adverts, you lucky bunnies. Also, go to sidetrack.co.uk, which is our dedicated website and we do articles based on most of our videos and we try to add a little bit more information for you to digest. So go check it out. As always, please stay safe, live long and prosper and I'll see you next time.